Hello everybody! Hope you're doing great and are ready for some volcano updates. Yesterday we had a few powerful earthquakes over 3 inch size right off the west coast of Reykjanes. I could not feel them here in the capital. Geophysicist Pautl told people to stay off the crater for at least a few more months after the recent stunt performed on Monday. 200 earthquakes were detected on Tuesday which is on the calmer side in the series we're in. Speaking of it, 10,000 earthquakes were detected in two weeks around Mount Kaelir. A very interesting paper was released today. I'll be reviewing it in the data and detail section. What it suggests is that the eruption in Geldingadilir is officially over. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to read it later. More information came in from Askja. The equipment there had been down for weeks, but it's up again and more is being installed. The land there is rising rapidly. Since the eruption began in Keldingadalir back in March, 320,000 people have visited, which is almost as much as Iceland's population. But after the activity stopped, now almost a month ago, Attendance has been declining rapidly. So, as I said earlier, it seems as scientists are calling the eruption off. They haven't given out any official announcement, but in the recent paper they refer to it as being over. If it is indeed over, it makes it the fourth longest lasting eruption in Iceland since the 20th century. It lasted for 183 days. Let's see how it compares to other eruptions in Iceland. In the paper, a few eruptions are ranked based on their lifetime, how much volume of lava they produced, and the output or the average lava flow the eruption produced. The paper is very interesting and I recommend checking it out after the video if you're interested. As most of you know, Geldingadalir was not the most powerful eruption ever recorded. It was almost the opposite. Just check out how small it is compared to some of Iceland's largest eruptions in recorded history. Holurun in 2014-15 had an output of 103 cubic meters per second. The recent Hekla eruptions ranging from 198 to 563 cubic meters per second. And the king of all fissure eruptions, Skaftar Eldar, that pumped out 783 cubic meters of lava, making it the largest fissure eruption in the last millennium. Those definitely deserve a video on their own. But how did Geldingadlar rank? Well, it scored 180 in days, 0.15 in volume, and 9.5 in average lava flow. Let's check out the activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula in the recent days. By looking at the last 24 hours, we can see that there is very little activity. Only a handful of earthquakes can be seen on the map, with none over 3 in magnitude. A sudden swarm of powerful earthquakes appeared off the coast of Reykjanes. At 8 kilometers underground, this could well be a sign of more magma. This area is a part of the Reykjanes Ridge, which stretches far south into the Atlantic Ocean. Reykjanes Peninsula is the only part of it above sea level. It's thought a lot of deep sea eruptions have occurred there when the peninsula has been resting. But what is happening outside of Reykjanes? Askja, one of the now many volcanoes being watched closely, is still showing signs of magma filling up the chamber under the surface. Scientists are monitoring the rise of the surface in the area, but as I said earlier, the equipment had been offline for weeks, but was fixed just recently. Since August, the land in the area has risen 14 centimeters, which is quite the height. In the last 24 hours, not much in the form of earthquakes can be seen there. 
but that's to be expected. It's not known if the recent activity will lead to an eruption in the next few months or the next few years. It's a big system there on Draska, and the eruptions can be large, like the one in 1874. That caused people to leave Iceland. But it's thought that Asuka needs time to build up that amount of power, and it's only been 60 years since the last eruption. So, what can we expect in the near future? Well, according to the recent paper, Geldingadalir seems to be out of the game, but I think it will share similarities with Kröplu Eldar, that was an eruption that lasted for nine years, from 1975 to 1984, with fissures opening for short periods of time in many different places. It's been stated before that the Reykjanes Peninsula is awake, and we can expect eruptions to come and go for the next 100 years, so it's just a matter of time before the next eruption starts if Geldingadalir is out of puff. If you want to learn about Iceland's geology and follow these events, you could consider subscribing. And if you want to share it with others, you could like and YouTube will do the rest. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.